Hi, I'm Chess Kane, AMSO dealer with OilOrdering.com, Synthetic Warehouse. Uh, today, uh, I actually got a call from one of my customers the other day, and uh, he said, let's go over the Zero W30. Can you do a, a video on that? So, Jason out of uh, Cincinnati. So, I thought, you know what, I need to get that done. This, this product is quite popular. Here in my store, it's not, but I get more telephone calls, actually from the southern states. So my main point, there's a couple points, I'll, we're going to talk about the viscosities here, but the main point of this oil, the reason I'm uh, excited about doing this video is there's a lot of automotive enthusiasts that want to feel the most out of their engine, the power, the response, the throttle response. Uh, this is the one that will do it. So we're getting a lot of calls from Texas and uh, Georgia in places where they do a lot of autocross, road course racing, things like that. So these customers know that this is the oil that's going to give them uh, the best uh, throttle power. In fact, uh, I was in a club. We dynoed cars. With, we all had the same light and flywheel and everything. And this is going to give you the max uh, power to squeeze out of that car and enjoy it, really. So I call it the high revving oil. And uh, we get a lot of customers. They'll just walk in the door. They make a beeline right to this. And those are the ones that I know that have really done their research. They've... They've tried the other products and they ended up with this. Uh, real quick on the viscosity, I want to show you this. Okay, it's a 0W30. The product code is AZO, Alpha Zebra October. And so we got a 0W30, a 530, and a 1030. Now all these oils actually have the same operating viscosity. Uh, when, we, when I finish this part, I'm going to put that data sheet up on the screen. We'll see that. But I'm going to explain the difference between these two numbers. A lot of people walk in and say, well, the zero is too thin. I don't want that. Well, just in, in real short, the 30 weight, the number on the, on the right, is the number that you should be concerned with. That is the number uh, that needs to match with the vehicle's requirements. Uh, so look in your owner's manual and make sure it's not supposed to be a 20 weight or a 40 weight or a 50 weight or something like that. Uh, that is resistance to flow. The, uh, the type of viscosity that's measured is in the form of what's called centistokes. You can look that up, CST. And that is the oil's resistance to flow or how it's the resistance to be pushed. Just like your oil pump pushes it through. The number on the right is the resistance of an object passing through that oil. So going back to the oil pump, instead of the, the, the pressure pushing it through, it's actually the uh, torque loss against that pump as it's spinning. So it's a different test. So these tests have more significance based on how they're used. So the one on the right is when the engine's running, the operating temperature. The one on the left is not actually for freezing conditions. It's around uh, this room temperature right here, uh, 75, 80 degrees, 65 to 80 degrees, somewhere in there. So there's a big difference at room temperature between these oils, but once they warm up, there's no more difference. So think about that. And that's why when you're out there on the track, uh, this oil is just overall more technology. Now let me segue into that. Uh, back, I believe this oil came out about 95, 96. I started this in 97, it, and I think it was pretty much a new product. It was called uh, Series 2000, and it was debuted as the oil that, with the latest technology, would start here, and then as it was affordable to put in the rest of the lines, it would drift its way through everything else. So it became known as the oil of choice for all the enthusiasts out there. And then later, uh, they came up with the Signature Series, and this was still the first one. This was the Signature Series. And then later they joined the top epsilon of products to that. Now let's go over that real quick. So we got 0, 030, we've got the 0, 020, we've got the 5, oops, we've got the 520. And anytime you use 520, you can step up to 0, 020 if you want more performance. They're both 20s, uh, same thing, same difference between 530 and 0, 030. So the 0, 020 is a step up in performance. Of course, we got our 530, the best seller. We've got the 1030, which I don't sell much of that. I actually sell more 030 than 1030. We have, it's a newer product, the 040, uh, Nissan GTRs, and uh, a bunch of the Chrysler Dodge products use this. I think 
uh, there's a Fiat that uh, requires this oil, um, or a Fiat engine that's in some of the Chrysler products. And then this is that new uh, Mustang uh, GT stuff right here, the Ford WS M2C931. Uh, so we'll do videos on all these uh, in the future, but uh, AZO, that's the product code again for the 0W30. And now let's take a look at the data sheet. Okay, I'm back here at the desk now, and I want to go over the data sheet. I want to show the reason uh, the Signature Series 0W30 stacks up, and there's no difference between the 530 and 1030. So let's look at the technical properties. And real fast, anytime you look at one of the AMSL data sheets on the, uh, don't have one here, but on the lower left-hand corner, uh, or the right-hand corner, there's a date. Uh, that shows the published date of this so you know uh, when the series uh, was done for that data sheet. Anyway, what we have here is the resistance to flow, kinematic viscosity for each one of these products in the signature series. And 100 degrees Celsius, which is 212 Fahrenheit, is the average expected operating temperature of an engine oil. Uh, actually, that goes back years ago, so that standard was set there, I believe. And we have the 0, 030, 530, and 1030. So at those temperatures, if you look at this real close, you'll actually notice the 1030 is uh, technically thinner. We're just talking about a decimal point. But that goes to prove what I was saying. Otherwise, there's no um, loss in uh, protection by using the 0W30. Now, to just take a step further, well, let's also, just to be fair, if we took a 1,000 of these tests, uh, lab tests, I'm sure those numbers will vary two or three uh, points based on the fuel that might get into the oil or something like that. Uh, in the lab, of course, when they set these standards, these are not run in an engine. These are done on a bench. You know, for all manufacturers, it's it's done one way. But you still have to assume that from one batch to the next, there's going to be a decimal point that's different. Now, uh, where the zero W is tested, it's uh, those are tested at extremely low conditions, but as far as the difference at uh, ambient temperatures, that's shown on this list as well. Oh, by the way, the 0W, you can get a close reading if you do look at the pore points between these as well. Again, they're very close, almost the same. But really where it matters is this temperature, uh, which is uh, tested at 40 degrees Celsius, which is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, that may be hot for us, but inside the engine, uh, it's extremely cool. So you see these linear numbers uh, ramp off uh, quite a bit. Uh, the 0W30, we're at 57.1. Let me highlight that for you. The 530, 59.7, and the 1030, it's thickening a bit more, uh, 10 or... Uh, is that uh, a few digits more than the 0W30, but you'll see that uh, logarithmically ramp down or thicken more for the 1030 as those temperatures drop. And I'm not talking about sub-zero temperatures, those type of frigid conditions. I'm talking about uh, 60 degrees, 50 degrees, and 40 degrees. So again, the point here is the 0W30 uh, will provide you with the adequate protection at all those ranges it's just like I said on the first part of the video, the, uh, I think I said this, the zero W is a sign of quality and performance. So real quick, this is off the subject just a little bit, but the 520 and 020 are almost identical as well. Now you don't want to change a 20 weight for a 30 or a 30 to a 20, but just like the zero 30 versus the 530 and the 1030, those all being interchangeable, the 020 and the 520 are completely interchangeable. Uh, and look at the numbers. That proves that point right there. But it's very important to know if you get stuck somewhere and you can't get the 020 and you need it, you can use the 520 and vice versa. Just make sure the number on the right is the same. That's very important. The only other thing that you want to know under that's important to point out here, under warranty, you do want to make sure that, uh, because the 030 is not as popular as the 530 or 1030, 
or the uh, 520 or the 020, you'll see that the 030, they skipped a couple performance tests. Uh, these are OEM um, specific engine uh, tests. So you do want to make sure that, uh, I'm not talking about the API because it meets all those, but some specific ones like the Chrysler MS6395, those type of things. So it doesn't hurt to look at that if you're under warranty. I know Ford is really strict with a, a couple of them. Uh, but out of warranty, you're you're covered by Amsoil's own warranty because it states on the data sheet that the five uh, the zero W thirty does replace five thirty and ten thirty. So I want to show you one more thing while we just got a couple minutes. This was printed for Amsoil dealers. It's a little bit more focused on those tests. I want to show you something about this um, test engine. It's a ninety four Nissan KA twenty four E which so happens, coincidental, I have one of those at home uh, that it's in a uh, 69 Datsun. It's, we've never started it yet. I'm doing the wiring for it right now. The 24E is the single uh, cam, and the, uh, uh, the 24DE is the dual overhead cam. But it's basically the same block. And this engine test is used by the largest testing campus in the world, I believe it's Southwest Research in San Antonio, they do all the standardized testing, whether it's a tire, aerospace industry, uh, semiconductor components, uh, they make the, um, the, the standard parts that are used uh, for calibration and those type of things. So this is quite significant here. Now this particular test I want to jump to something very important here. This engine was made for 5W30 or 10W30. Now, obviously, we know the 0W30 would provide the same protection, but Amsoil went ahead and had them use the 020 on this test. And look, it's a 100-hour test, and there's still no wear on that cam. Now, think about it. If you're... Uh, this is 100 hours. Imagine eight hours driving, and uh, for me that would be going from Dallas to somewhere quite a ways north of Wichita. That's quite a drive, and you accidentally did the oil change with zero W thirty. Now, if you uh, with zero W twenty, now if you did that with another brand or petroleum oil, you know that engine would be uh, in pretty bad shape because you're way off on the viscosity. As soon as you get that oil through so many cycles, the shear would take that 20 probably down to a 16 weight or what have you. With the Amsoil products, they don't lose their viscosity. They, that's what the warranty is all about. So if we go uh, back up here and look at what this test involves, it's 100 hours. The sequence 4A test was developed to, I'm, I'm reading over here on the left, I'll highlight that. Simulate the stress is commonly placed on engines of taxis, delivery vehicles, uh, commuter service vehicles. It measures the ability of a crankcase oil to control camshaft lobe wear. Worn or damaged cam lobes can lead to loss in efficiency, increased engine noise, and expensive large-scale repairs. So this is a very significant test to be able to withstand that. And 50 minutes at idle and 10 minutes at elevated RPM it constantly goes through that pattern over a hundred uh, hours of cycles and let's see what did we see here yeah the the minimum okay wear is 90 micrometers and the Amsoil running the wrong oil the 0w20 in a 530 test was still just a fraction of that 90 we were 20.28 so that's 100 hours of using the wrong oil and still no wear. Now that converts to performance. It's not just that you uh, save the engine. Uh, and let's go back to using the 530. Uh, 530 and 5, uh, 1030 and 030. So apples to apples here. Let's just say uh, on the performance side, the Signature Series over all the other products that are out there on the shelf for obvious reasons, the chemistry and the base stocks that are used, you are going to notice the performance, and that's why we get return customers. Uh, the last thing I'll say on this is I get plenty of customers that come in the door. I will say some of the routine things that I usually say. I want the customer assured that they're buying the right product, 
And uh, plenty now, it used to not happen, but now I get customers saying, you don't have to sell me on it. I've been using Amazon for eight years, 11 years, 15 years, or my dad or uh, my family's been using it. We're completely sold. Uh, and then they usually throw a testimonial in, something that they uh, noticed that, uh, uh, you know, was something that uh, opened their eyes to the performance of the product. So anyway, I hope that gives you a good overview and confidence that the Zero W30 is an all-out performance, high-revving product that you might want to try. If you really enjoy driving your car, uh, that oil uh, will be the one to impress you. So thanks again for liking my videos and subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to use the uh, comments area below. Also, request. That would, uh, I'd love to look at it. And we got more videos on the way as well. Uh, thanks again, and until next time.